we are less than two years since President William Ruto became president. But he has become so unpopular within a very short time. It has never happened, even in Kenya. No, it's, it's, it's never happened and he's become unpopular with the same group that he claims voted him in. Um, when we're talking about young voters, when you're talking about hustlers, mambambogas, those are the ones who are really upset uh, with how he has managed the country. I think also it's the fact that his, his team or his administration has had this sense of being very arrogant. There are just too many images, videos of them just not caring at all, uh, almost detached from people and the pulse of the public and not reading the room. They seem to struggle with identifying what people are going through and having a sense of emotional intelligence. They seem to lack emotional intelligence together. Um, and I think that has even sparked even of more outrage. Uh, and then the amount of promises that people are, are not quite seeing coming to fruition. You, you feel that the president made a lot of promises during the campaign? Too many, too many promises. Even, you know, as an organization, we try and track some of those promises. And, and you know, they, they were just even coming in even after he was voted in, he would still continue to make promises almost every other day uh, to the point where you can't even keep up with some of these promises. There's just been too many promises and sometimes uh, you get drained and exhausted from the stories. You want to see action. You, you want to tell me you can't track and see a single promise that he has fulfilled? Um, I would not say a single promise. I would say there are some that are not yet fulfilled. It's like in the process of, because you know, he did talk about also employment and opportunities for young people, especially in the digital space. So we've seen him signing a lot of agreements, but I cannot tell you how many jobs that translates to. I cannot tell you how it has brought a difference to our economy and how much it has contributed to the GDP. So there's still some some promises that are in their works, uh, but then I wouldn't say that there are promises that have been fulfilled. I wouldn't. Well, why do people think, or why do Kenyans think that the troubles are too many? It's, they are too many, especially when we're talking about um, a president who pushes for digitalization. He should have more virtual meetings. I mean, um, you don't have to meet physically these days when it's something important. Uh, that you'd like to discuss, but also the fact that he travels with an entourage. He doesn't travel alone. He travels with an entire battalion. The US, uh, the US trip was, had a lot of people, influencers, journalists, that's the problem. everyone, like, like he carried everyone. That's the problem. <laughs> that's why it's so expensive. Uh, first of all, it's just not about the cost of the travel, it's the people who are traveling with you. Um, that's expensive. So even it's the reduction of that. And also it's when you're doing all this travel, who's managing the country? Um, you have As the deputy, deputy president. But we all know that they are struggling with a relationship and, mm -hmm. and we know that the deputy position also struggles with positioning, uh, not quite sure what their role is. Um, so there's also a bit of a systemic challenge there with having a deputy. Um, but also for someone who, he sh what he should do to your question is work. He needs to be working. Travel should be the last on his mind right now. If you had an, from, the dip, from the president and his team, they say that it's from these travels that Kenya is able to make deals, Kenya is able to, and let's say, attract investors because the president is now able to talk directly to investors. But you see, if... Kenya was a country that had a conducive environment for business, he wouldn't have to travel. They would come to us. There's, there's a different way of doing business where if you have the right systems, the proper policies in place and the frameworks for accountability, countries will come to Kenya. We wouldn't need our president to travel. Um, and that's the switch because now He's going out there and trying to convince them that investing in Kenya 
is the best decision they'll make. While all he has to do is make sure that Kenya is the best decision that they will make. They will come anyway. I heard that there are many companies that are folding up and yeah. some are transferring their bases from Kenya and especially yeah. multinationals. Um, how true is it? It's true. It's true. Looking at Tanzania, actually, um, we've lost um, a few tech companies here. They've gone to Ghana, some have gone to Nigeria, some have actually opened in Uganda. Do we have, like, names of some? Yes, the, the company that used to manage Summersource is the one that has moved to Ghana. And Summersource is the current case happening with Meta here in Kenya because of how they're treating workers. Mm -hmm. So doing business is tough here and I know that especially American corporations they are struggling because even with the tax increments we're taxing people that used to avoid a evade tax uh, now they're being taxed even people who work for American companies are being taxed wow. I wasn't there before and so it just pushes people out it, it does. The corruption is pushing people out. There are so many people who have shared even online how they have brought investors to the country and government is asking for deals, they're asking for cuts, uh, which are too expensive, and they end up just saying, um, you know what, forget it. I'd rather go to another country. Has it escalated in recent times or it has been there? No, it, it has been there, but it has escalated. This, this administration, it has escalated. Yeah.